reality. you love me from everlasting so do you love me in this everlasting and so will you love me in the everlasting to come I give you glory and that is my conviction not because I choose to but the only option for me is to believe what your word says is true about me in the beautiful name of Jesus. Join your hands and give him a mighty hand of praise. Thank you, worship team. We may take our seats, saints, in the beautiful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mali, good to see you. Oh, it's a beautiful surprise. Hallelujah. And Father, we know that our souls are ready to receive your word. Our hearts are fertile ground that your grace establishes us and not in the, in the foregoing or assuming of foods or not, but your word is the one that establishes us. For we know that the grace in which our hearts are established is that very one that came with our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that even as you speak to us, even by the Holy Spirit, we learn and we are transformed even to the glory of your name. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I told us that we'll start from the book of Psalms, chapter 19, this week. Uh, for those of us that are joining us from home, we love you. Thank you for tuning in. And for those of you that dare the coldness of the morning to come here, you are blessed. Hallelujah. I hope you have your notebooks, your Bibles, your pens, so we can note down important things. The book of Psalms, not Psalms, Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. We shall start from verse 1, but before we get to Psalm, but before we get to Acts chapter 19, let us read Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. We are still talking, growing in faith. I had thought we would finish it today, but it is impossible for us to finish today. So we shall not finish today. 
uh, hopefully we'll see how next Sunday will be and then we'll uh, we'll start from there verse 10 the book of Acts chapter 9 I'm going to read very many verses here but it is well now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him the Lord said in a vision Ananias and he said here I am Lord so the Lord said to him, Arise and go to a street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. And um, behold, he is praying. And in a vision he had seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Saul was literally blind in this instance, praise the Lord, because of the encounter he had with the Lord as Jesus was asking him, Why are you persecuting me? So Saul was literally blind here. And if you go back to verse 12, what God is speaking to Ananias is clear. But what Ananias is saying to Paul is a little bit different. And I want you to connect all of this with the things that we've studied uh, from the eight episodes we've done before. And we see what the Holy Spirit is communicating to us. Verse 12, before I go back to verse 17... Verse 12 says, and in a vision he has seen a man, this is the Lord speaking to Ananias, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Praise the Lord. This is Saul, and to him at that moment, what he wants, because he is just natural, but even natural men can see dreams. Eh? Hallelujah. So Saul, what he sees that Ananias will do is all about Saul regains his sight and that is done. Let me show you verse 12 again. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So of course there Ananias also is fearful because Paul is uh, fierce and so he's like, how can I go? He has been killing your saints in Jerusalem. Now, how about me? Won't I be added on the number of those that have been killed? And if I am added on that number, then uh, you'll be losing ministers of the gospel. So he's trying to speak to the Lord. Then he tells him, he's a chosen vessel of mine. Praise the Lord. Before we even continue, Saul, as murderous as he was, God is saying he's a chosen vessel. And so the Lord does not choose them that appear clean on the outside. Eh? The Lord chooses you because he loves you, not because you have done anything to deserve to be chosen. Praise the Lord. And that is why you do not bring yourself to him that he may choose you. He calls you and he even drags you to himself that he may choose you. As you're still messing up out there, you are chosen. Praise the Lord. And if he chooses them that are non-believers, because down there, Ananias tells Saul that you are going to receive your sight. So, he is blind, he is murderous, and so even the preacher fears, but even the people that you fear to minister the word to have been chosen of the Lord. But as Paul still says, because he understood something later in the book of Romans, he says... How can they hear unless they are preached to? So people in the world out there have responsibilities to carry out in the kingdom, but we have said mm -mm, that one has, 
has done very many bad things. So I cannot go there because even when people have preached to them, they have continued to be bad. This is what Ananias is saying. This guy is a killer. So you better reserve me as your minister so that I can minister to them that do not kill. Because if I go to him, he has killed saints before. So you're going to lose me as well. Praise the Lord. So he says, he is my chosen vessel. Hallelujah. And I am going to, to show him the things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, this suffering is not that the Lord is going to set for him things. Of course, Jesus explained the sufferings of a believer. Hallelujah. And these are, Paul later calls them light afflictions. So they are light afflictions to us. And yet, these were indeed revealed to him by God himself. Praise the Lord. So let us continue now in verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said... Brother Saul, hey, Ananias, Brother Saul, the Lord. <laughs> I have a feeling Ananias still had that thinking of what Saul would do to him. Eh? So he says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, what is, an, what is Saul waiting for? Sight alone. But what is the plan of the Lord? More than that. Receive your sight and receive the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Did God tell this to Ananias? I want you to investigate scriptures. See your disciples. Did, Saul, did God tell this to Ananias that Saul was going to be filled with the Holy Spirit? You see, there are things that a believer cannot grow in all. There are things, there are steps. No, no, let, let, let me not take the words, use the word steps because we might take it literally. There are things that a believer will not reach in minus the Holy Spirit. So the assignment that God has for Saul is so big that he cannot bear it unless... He is filled with the Holy Spirit. So Ananias knows that the assignment that you have, Saul, needs you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because it is you that has the Holy Spirit that has the privilege to have the mind of God. So Saul is going to receive the things that he must suffer and it just clicks in Ananias' mind that this guy is going to receive the Holy Spirit. Not just physical sight. And yet it is all that Saul wanted. So he says, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 18. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. They were not scales. Eh? Something like scales. And he received his sight at once. And he rose and was baptized now there, that is when people now confuse us with baptisms. Eh? What is the chronology of the events that happened? He rose and was baptized. Who, who is baptized after they are risen? Of course, you're baptized by being immersed, eh? according to how they tell us about the baptism, by dipping in water. But the baptism that happened to Saul was he rose because he was seated, he got up, and he was baptized. The baptism that Jesus said in Matthew 28, eh, that baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we are going to see in the book of Acts chapter 19. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 19 says, So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Praise the Lord. In verse 17, Ananias told him that I am coming that you may receive the Holy Spirit. I want you to give yourself an answer to this question. And please give yourself an answer because it will help to open up your mind. Eh? What shows that you've received the Holy Spirit? You don't need to tell me, but answer it yourself. What shows that you have received the Holy Spirit? 
Have you given yourself an answer? They may be, they may be, it may be more than one answer. You may give 10 or 3 or even 1 or even none if you really do not know. But now, verse 17, Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he rose and was baptized. We do not see anywhere out here the fulfillment of what Ananias said in verse 17, that you will receive his sight. The next thing we see is that Paul now, because now he starts being called Paul later on, but he increases in knowledge, he goes out preaching. And yet we do not see anywhere something as a signature of what Ananias said that he has received his, or he has received the Holy Spirit. So all that happens is immediately after Ananias has declared the word, what happens? Something falls from him, something like uh, scales, and then he receives his sight. He gets up. Praise the Lord. Then they give him food. He eats, and he stays there. The next thing we see, he starts missions. He starts mission, missions. And that is what happens when we have received the Holy Spirit. So here, what causes the reception of the Holy Spirit? Ananias has spoken to someone that is ready. Praise the Lord. Because Saul was ready and he was waiting. All he needed was clarity and that is what Ananias gave. Saul only wanted to see physically. Then he received clarity that that is not all that you will receive, but even the Holy Spirit. And so what do ministers bring about? Ministers bring clarity, and that clarity is the incoming of the Holy Spirit. The book of John, chapter 6. The book of John, chapter 6. And we shall read verse 63. Now these are verses we usually read here. Um, hmm. It says, It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. He says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So as a ready soul was receiving the word, what was happening? The incoming of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And so that is why he tells him that you may receive. Because Saul's mind was ready to receive. He only needed clarity because he didn't know even who the Holy Spirit was. And so that should take us now to the book of Acts chapter 19 where I told us last week that we shall start from today. And we see this soul who received the Holy Spirit in an unusual way, if we can say that, because that is not how the Holy Spirit is preached as being received these days. So now let us see something else. Praise the Lord. The book of Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Scripture says, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, his name is changed now, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he found some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? The question is, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They continue to say, so they say to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, Jesus indeed, sorry, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. 
Now you see this is different. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us go back to verse 1 and then... Uh, wow. Verse 1, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. They are some disciples. We've been taught here that these were disciples of John. No, they were not. Praise the Lord. Let scripture interpret itself. Scripture says they were disciples. And so it means they were students. And the the question that Paul poses in verse 2 is what gives us an idea of whose disciples these were. Praise the Lord. And so let us go to verse 2. He says, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So were these believers or they were non-believers? They were believers. So it means they are believers that have not embraced the Holy Spirit. And that is what some religions do. They believe, they, they love God, but they reject the testimony of the Holy Spirit. Like to them, there is nothing like the Holy Spirit. And without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible for you to have the revelation of the life of God that you have in you. And that is why them that are without the Holy Spirit are them that keep saying, I want to achieve this in God. I want to do this for God that he may do this in return. And that is not what you ought to do because you as a believer, you only receive the Holy Spirit that he may convict you of righteousness and not push you in try, into trying to work towards righteousness. Praise the Lord. So he asks them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they are believers that have not embraced the Holy Spirit. And how do you know a believer has not embraced the Holy Spirit? The believer that says, I am not sure whether rapture is for me. Because rapture is for the righteous. Praise the Lord. And it is the Holy Spirit who convicts you, the believer, of righteousness. So if you are unsure of rapture, it means you have no relationship. You've not cultivated a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so you are unsure whether you are righteous enough to be raptured. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit, when he is received, he reveals the things that Jesus told his disciples. He has many to speak to them, but they cannot bear them now. The reason they could not bear them now is because they lived in a dispensation of do this so that you can deserve this. And so if he told them things that are given to them that have not worked, they would not believe them. That is why when we are ministering to them that are without God, we minister even the things that are freely given in a way that will be easy to understand for someone who has all their life lived in the bondage of do this so that you can attain this. So the question is very important. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So it means the Holy Spirit is not a later time something for a believer. The Holy Spirit is an instant is instantly available to whoever believes. Praise the Lord. Now, did, does it mean that they did not have the Holy Spirit? No, because we know that every believer has the Holy Spirit. But the level to which you receive him, receiving is in your mind. That he is the one that instructs your mind, even by the spirit of God which is in you. That is the receiving. And that is why now when you go to verse 3, he asks them, into what then were you baptized? Because they are believers, but they have been 
baptized or to be baptized what Jesus spoke about in in uh, verse 18 19 20 of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 28 is being immersed right now as we are seated here we are experiencing baptism we took time during the lockdown with uh, with scribe to teach baptisms i think there are seven like seven episodes of baptisms that we did you can go back and check them out on facebook um he was asking them into what way are you immersed when you believed because they end verse 2 by saying we've not even heard of anything like the holy spirit but we are believers so it means someone will be stunted. They will not grow in faith minus the work of the Holy Spirit in them. So they are like, yes, we are believers, but we've not heard of anything like even the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So Paul says to them, into what then? Where are you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. And so that is very important. Because Paul then explains to them the purpose of John. And when we were studying baptisms, we said, John himself, he reached a point, he was, two, he was with two of his disciples. And then he saw Jesus passing by. You know what he told them? He told them, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The two disciples heard that. It clicked into their minds. They left John. They followed Jesus. And John did not complain. Why? Because John's teaching was up to a point, praise the Lord. In this same book of Acts, there are two disciples. No, there is one. He was very fluent in the word of God, but only until the baptism of John. And he was instructed further in the word, and he became a very great teacher. Of course, there are many people that we... We do not really take advantage of here in the word. Actually, it is just here. I'm seeing it even here in chapter 18 of the book of Acts. You'll go back and read it from verse 24, the book of Acts chapter 18. Apollos, he became a very beautiful teacher, but he was instructed only until the baptism of John. But the duty of you that has understood is to elevate such a one to a level where they can now continue to grow in faith. Because if someone is limited up to the baptism of John, and that is what religion does, eh? because John would be like you, brood of vipers, who want you to escape the wrath? And you, who goes beyond the baptism of John, how do you minister? The Lord has extended his love to you. So someone who believed otherwise, you bring to them a realization that causes them to embrace the Holy Spirit that they may grow thereby. Praise the Lord. What am I trying to drive at? The disciples were believers, just as we may all be. But until we are persuaded of some fundamental and basic truths, we shall remain ordinary. And my desire is that we do not remain ordinary. Now, ordi uh, remaining ordinary is a choice. And advancing beyond being ordinary is a choice. Praise the Lord. You make the choice to receive. You make the choice to remain just the way you are. And mind you, let me use this statement, but do not take it literally. You will go to heaven. Praise the Lord. At the end of this world, you are safe. At the end of this earth, you are safe. But that is not all that you are meant for. You are meant for much more. You are meant to manifest indeed Christ Jesus as he is here. And that only happens as you grow in faith. But that growth you cannot experience when you choose to remain ordinary in the baptism of John. And you are among them that are saying, yeah, I know the Holy Spirit works, but we've not heard even about, about anything like that. Leave that for people that lead us. For us, Sisini Washirika too. Praise the Lord. And many times we have even told, you know, and we, uh, like now I might speak something that may be pain someone that may be watching or someone like you, and maybe I may speak something that intimates you to someone that you know, and then you start speaking in your heart. Do not touch the anointed one of God. Sasa mbona weo unaniguza mimi? Because I'm also the anointed one of God. Praise the Lord. Even you, 
Hallelujah. When God speaks about the anointed ones, he is speaking about you. Because you are the one who has an anointing from on high. And you know all things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. John speaks about that in his letters, but we'll not go there today. So they said to him, we have known so much as hard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Imagine these are believers. They are even ministers because a disciple not only listens, but they have discussions. When you are in school, you see you have discussion groups. Enoch, don't you guys have discussion groups? But you are students there. You are disciples there. A disciple always shares with another friend. So imagine a disciple who does not acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit and they're having discussions with fellows. So they have, uh, do you guys have things called sosh? Shoshama, something like that, where schools visit others and they have interactions. So you are out of here and during the week you meet someone, a fellow believer, and you're sharing the word of God, the word of God, and then they, they start speaking about the Holy Spirit. You're like, what are you talking about? Praise the Lord. You see, you're being more destructive than if you didn't know, because that shouldn't come out of a believer. Eh? Let them that are without God speak about such things. We cannot grow when we choose to remain ordinary. And that is why I bless the Lord for people who choose to learn as much as they can learn and not just remain like every other person else. Praise the Lord. You are meant for greater things and for bigger things. So imagine this word coming out of a believer saying, we have not so much as had whether there is a Holy Spirit. And yet they've continually been in teaching. Now, this is why they had not heard of the Holy Spirit. Verse 3. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? The reason why Paul is asking them that is that you can only, when we are teaching baptism, as we said, when you immerse something, like when you immerse a cloth in, um, in what is called D -I, no, D -Y -E, dye, it comes out carrying the very colors of that ink where you've put it, where you've immersed it. So when it comes out, wherever it is, it, it is taken, it shows forth those very colors. And that is how we have Vitenge. Praise the Lord. They come out, they are put in ink, and as they come out, they are indeed showing the very colors of the ink where they were put or immersed. So Paul is aware of that. And so the question he asks, because you've not heard of the Holy Spirit, then it means whoever it is that baptized you all, whoever it is that preached to you the love of God, only preached to you something less. Because where I have told us in the book of Matthew, Jesus himself instructed, verse 19, the book of Matthew chapter 28, Jesus himself instructed and said, let me open there so we can see. He says, go therefore, verse 19, the book of Matthew chapter 28, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, among whom were those in uh, Ephesus where Paul met. Praise the Lord. So he said to them, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, indeed of the, I am using, I am substituting that word and for the Greek word K-A-I, he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, indeed of the Son, even of the Holy Spirit. So that baptism is not that you be put in the Father first, then you be put in the Son second, then you be put in the Holy Spirit. No, no. Jesus said in 1030 of the book of John that my father and I are one. Praise the Lord. So he was just saying, teach them the whole package. So whoever ministered to these 12 disciples did not minister to them the whole package. And that is what religion does. From the moment you learn, you receive Christ, you ought to be instructed in the whole package. And that is why for those of us who, are, uh, who usually come for the discipleship classes, 
There is something that we talked about in the book of First Peter chapter 2. Peter says, as newborn babies, desire the sincere spiritual milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Because in that sincere spiritual milk of the word is where you get the wholeness of the entirety of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So, the reason why Paul is asking them, into what then were you baptized? A cloth can only show the true colors of the dye where it was put. So, Paul is aware that the mistakes you are having are not mistakes of generational curses. Praise the Lord. And so we are told, you know, you're not seeing growth because there are things in your family that need to be broken. Hakuna. You belong to the family of God, beloved. Whether you are fully aware of it, whether you are not, the truth is, if you are a believer, you belong to the family of God. Praise the Lord. So, People are told, you know, if something is hard for you, if you cannot overcome something, then you need to pay a sacrifice so that you can break that. No, it is only a matter of knowledge. That is why Paul starts by trying to speak to them from the source of how they received Christ. And so many of us, when we receive Christ a certain way and we are taught something less of what Christ presents to us, we shall live our whole life believing to that level. So Paul is asking them, into what baptism were you baptized then? Then he answers, they answer and said, into John's baptism. You can only show forth the true colors of where you have been dipped. And so these saints were only declaring that there is nothing like the Holy Spirit because they didn't know. Because when they were being taught life, when they were receiving life, they received life without the Holy Spirit. It does not mean that they didn't have the Holy Spirit, but they were not aware of what they have. Let me tell you, say it. When you continue to dig deeper in the word of God and you become so much aware of the realities that you have, praise the Lord. Some of you will even stop looking at me like that. Okay, let me repeat this statement so you can understand it. Because eh? sometimes I can be sharing and I'm like, and I, I see someone is like, what are you talking about? But when you get somewhere where you've intimated yourself so much with the Holy Spirit, even your facial expression as you're studying the word will change because things will be falling into the right place in your mind. Like this one is connect. It's like a jigsaw. This one is connecting with the other. And this one is connecting with the other. One. And the end result of it is a very beautiful picture that is drawn. So, you can when, when, when you give yourself to a certain teaching, you will show yourself just like that. And that is why when, when we speak of cultures, you know this is our culture. This is our culture. This is our norm. This is how we've done it. This is how it has always been done. It is only because those things have been taught from generation to generation. And that is what brings forth culture. Now, let me tell you something about what happened when uh, Africa was colonized. We had our own civilization. But to our colonizers, it wasn't civilization. Praise the Lord. So what they did they took away this African civilization that we have, we had, and they gave us their own civilization. So they took away the, a part of what our culture was, and they brought in their own. Praise the Lord. And so that is what, why now you hear politicians are like, you know what, the, 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 even the governance system, we had our own, like back in Uganda, when... Um, there are things of kingdoms and monarchs and things like that. And when I hear people praising and uh, regarding those monarchs, and at the same time speaking against the government, you know, there are two different things. Because in a monarch, the leader will be until they are no more physically. Then another one from the same lineage will be. We are very okay with that. But because it is different with the governance system of the state. You see, we cannot fight in a monarch because that is how it should be. 
but we can fight with the leadership president, things like that, because that is a different dispensation. But trust me, if even at the president level it was governed like a monarch, no one would have any problem with how long a leader stays in power. Because in our African system, you cannot question a leader, but we can only question our leaders because they are, we are using a foreign system. Of course, now it has stayed for so long. Now we think it is ours. But when you go back to African roots, you cannot question a leader. Am I lying? Okay. So Paul is saying, into what baptism were you baptized? Because he knows when you have received such a kind of baptism, you will always show as that. So for some of us, the things that are seemingly bad in our lives are only a result of the teaching that we have received. And the moment you know certain truths from there, you will, you will, uh, what do they, you will shoot in your growth in faith. Why? Because some knowledge has come to you. So the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. We shall start from verse 15. Because when you give yourself to a teaching, you remain growing by that. And everywhere you'll go, you'll show as a descendant of such a teaching. So, verse 15, Paul says, Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. Now listen to that next statement. That your progress may be evident to them. To all, sorry, that your progress may be evident to all. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. So, progress of a believer is a result of their meditations, and meditation is a result of where you've been immersed. You can only meditate on something that you have been taught. You can only meditate on something that you have been told is true. Because we are told in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 that whatever things are true, he continues to mention a whole lot of things describing the things that we should meditate on. on. Then he says the end result of it, meditate on these things. So the disciples here, they kept meditating on things that are without the Holy Spirit. And even in their showing, even in their manifestation, it was that this is as much as we can show, but the Holy Spirit, we were told, there is not the Holy Spirit. All we can meditate on is until the level of John the Baptist. The Baptist. So he says, meditate on these things. He's speaking this to Timothy. He tells, them, he tells him, give yourself wholly to them. You cannot see growth as a believer until you've given yourself wholly to the kind of baptism that you've received. So right now as you're being baptized in the word, even this morning, the question is, have you given yourself wholly to it? Because then your profiting and your progress becomes evident to all. The progress of the disciples became evident to Paul in their ignorance. Their progress was ignorant progress, and it was evident. Why? Because they were disciples. They continued learning, but they were learning half-truths. Thank the Lord because you're not learning half-truths. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Jesus himself says in the book of Matthew chapter 5, the book of Matthew chapter 5, in verse 16, Jesus says, actually let me start from verse 14. But I want to read us verse 16. Jedida, this was your word. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Who is he speaking about? Them that were believers, them that were his own. So he says, nor do they Light a lamp and put it on a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The light of the light, 
The light that you have is Christ Jesus in you. So he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Light shines because there has been an empowerment for you to light. And that is why last week we spoke about exercising wisdom in power. Because you have received power by the Holy Spirit in you. Now you only need to continue in the power that you have received. Because you have the Holy Spirit. Now, as you continue to let light shine in you, what do men see? Men see your good works. And because you are not the source of the good works, and you're not trying to show forth the good works, but you're just letting Christ shine in you by the function of the reality that you have received from the Genesis or from the beginning, then the glory goes back to the Lord. But all that starts from the question we asked in 19.3. When Paul is asking, into what baptism were you baptized then? Now, you must have been baptized in various things because not many of us grew up in the grace of God. When we received Christ, we received Christ as him that has loved us today. Loved us today. But the following day when we mess up in a way, he will cease to love us. And then we shall have to work so that he loves us again. Then later on when we mess up, then he loves us no more. No, that is not how God works. Now, you can have an opportunity to receive this truth because that is what Paul did in the following verses. And I am sure uh, we may not finish all of them now. Praise the Lord. Now, when you are baptized into something, in this time and in this place, it is the word of God that you're baptized into, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He causes you to know things that others may not have known. See, Paul, of course he was Saul, in verse 12 of the book of uh, Acts chapter 8, the Lord speaks to Ananias, where we've read, and he tells him, Saul has seen someone called Ananias coming and laying his hands on him, and he receives his sight. That is all he knew. Praise the Lord. Then Ananias, this time we see that he is more knowledgeable than who? He is more knowledgeable than Saul. But where else do you see Ananias? Does it mean that he did less? No. No. He kept doing more, but there is a greater step that Saul took because of the baptism that he, he got, and he continued in it. So the book of Psalms 119, I want to show us something in verse 99. Psalms 119, verse 99. Shoko parandere porosa. He says, I have more understanding than all my teachers. We read about this on Thursday, I believe. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. The kind of understanding that gives, the, the kind of testimony that gives you more understanding than even them that seemingly have taught you, because right now we can know that Ananias, in a way, taught Saul. Because when Saul expected only opening of eyes, Ananias came with something better, even the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Then because Saul meditated on the reality that he has the Holy Spirit, we see many of his letters. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he says, I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation where you have been baptized into if you do not give your if you do not acknowledge the baptism that you have received and you continue learning that you're the one who will be saying mm -mm, that one is an overdue that one is an overdue but when it doesn't now mean that uh, when you have been instructed then everything is is true actually that gives you even the ability to discern when something is not scriptural or when something is not spiritual. Praise the Lord. Verse 100 says, I understand more than, my, than the ancients. Why? Because I keep your precepts. Let me end with the book of Psalms chapter 63. Psalms chapter 63 and uh, let me see the verse that we can read. Psalms chapter 63 verse 
six Alleluia. Hmm. Let me start from verse five. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. He says, I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Now, paying attention on verse 6. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. When I remember you, that you there is the kind of baptism that you've received. Because you can only show forth in the color. Your cloth is looking like that because of the color that was put in it when it was being manufactured. So when the psalmist says, when I remember you, when, I, when a cloth remember that I was painted color blue, it has no option but to show forth color blue. So you can't blame the disciples. Them that are commonly called Johnny's disciples, they were not. They were disciples because they are believers. Because Paul asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So growth is impossible minus the realization of the rock from whence you were hewn. Praise the Lord. You know that is why I tell us the study we have on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, because we study even when we sing. Friday, Saturday in the morning, sorry, Sunday in the morning, Sunday in the evening. Take them as a whole package, not in isolation. Praise the Lord. Of course you might have different books for the different fellowships. But Keep all that knowledge as cumulative knowledge, not in isolation. So, we've been told to remember the rock from whence you were hewn. And so he says, when I remember you on my bed, where I was dipped, I meditate on you, even in night watches. So for, them, for those of you that enjoy keshas, when you are called for a kesha, please meditate on the Lord in the night watches. So when we meet, even in the morning, when we meet, even in the evening, when we meet on Tuesdays, when we meet on Thursdays, Fridays, even on the devotions that we do on our WhatsApp group, what is your meditation? On the rock from whence you were hewn. On the kind of baptism that you received. And therein is your profiting. The book of First Timothy chapter 4, we read verse 15. I want us now to see verse 16 and we shall call it a Sunday service. Verse 16 of 1 Timothy chapter 4. He says, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Doctrine is the baptism that you've received. The doctrine which is teaching, Didache, the teaching or instruction in righteousness that you have received. He says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. You cannot blame the other disciples. The only person that can be blamed is him that went out teaching and yet they needed to be instructed more in the grace of God. What the writer of Hebrews says in verse 12 of chapter 5, the book of Hebrews. So he says, Acts chapter 4 verse 16, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. He says, continue in them. So without you knowing your genesis, it is impossible to know your tomorrow. Because your tomorrow is the same as your genesis. So no matter how much you how much you do or whatever it is that you do until you are persuaded that you were forgiven until you are persuaded that you have the Holy Spirit eternally you will not see growth so that is when we see people that say they have stunted in salvation they cannot grow they are failures only because they have not given themselves to what they were instructed in all they were instructed in falsehoods 
but you are not like one who was instructed in falsehoods. And even if you were, you have an opportunity now like the disciples that Paul interfaced with because we shall see that later on he instructed them in the very knowledge to the extent that they were even able to speak in other tongues and to prophesy. Why? Because knowledge had come in. All you need is knowledge that you may manifest indeed as the son of God. So he says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. Why? Because in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So when someone has not given themselves wholly to the word, there is no salvation to the hearers. Father, I pray that myself as the minister of the word in this place, I'll give myself wholly to your word, that salvation may be evident to these beautiful saints both of them that are in this place and them that are watching from home. That is my prayer, Lord, that even as I continue to give myself wholly to this doctrine and to the teaching that you've, been, that you've given unto us, there will be manifestation of salvation to our minds, first to myself and then, for, and then secondly, all. Then it flows out to them that hear me. I declare that the saints in this place are fed well to your very knowledge they are not stunting because I have given myself to learn the purity of your word that I may declare your truths in the very sense that you've desired. And I pray for you, beloved, that even as you give yourself to the word holy, it becomes evident in you. Your profiting and your progress is evident to men and you shine the life of God wherever you go. You are cleared because of the life that you've received. You are cleared because of the knowledge of the baptism that you've received. And if you're in this place and there is any falsehood that you have learned, you have an opportunity to unlearn it. And even if you're watching from home and you've had anything outside of this truth, you have an opportunity to unlearn it. Continue in this teaching. You can always continue to tune in with us or you can always continue to come and study the word with us. Because what does the word say? It says you have been made a new creature. You are free. No more manipulations, beloved. And do not allow that. Because when you allow that, then you will not see profiting, which is true in the knowledge of God. That is my prayer for you. Hallelujah. That your profiting may be evident that there will be salvation to you and salvation to them that hear us. That when you speak, people hear life. Why? Because you know what you've been baptized into. Have a beautiful week in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Nicholas, for being used of our Father to deliver that word, which is life, which is spirit unto us. And if there is anyone in our midst who is not yet in the family, who Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, please repeat these words after me, even for our online viewers, that Lord Jesus, I thank you for the coming of your word this day. I thank you that I have been taught and that I am a new creation. I believe in my heart that you died and rose again for my sake and that I'm a new creation. I confess with my mouth this day that I am saved. In the name of Jesus, heaven rejoices for those who have made that salvation prayer. Please feel free to reach out to the contacts on our Facebook or even come in person and meet our pastor anytime he is available. Let us give to the house of the Lord this morning. Amen.